To paint or not to paint, today I'm going to try not painting, or at least not with paint. I'm going to try and use the mica powder and put it into the mold on the numbers, then pour my resin, let it cure, and basically be done, in theory. I think it will be easiest with the cap mold, so I'm going to try it on the cap mold as well as a jumbo sprue mold and see how well I can try and apply the mica powder, which I'm sure is not that great. But I'll mix up my resin first, even though I would recommend mixing it after you do the powder because it takes me longer than I think it would to try and meticulously paint all those numbers. I set it off to the side to let the bubbles raise and pop, and then I'm going to take this paintbrush dip it into the mica powder, and then paint each of the numbers. I'm going to try to do as best I can only touching the numbers, and then as you can imagine, I find out that it's not that easy to put powder on silicone, and it kind of leaves splotches and powder pockets, if you will, everywhere, which you want to try to avoid. So in hindsight, after doing it this way, I would recommend actually just dumping the powder in there and shaking the mold, if that makes sense, so that it just gets an even layer all over the whole thing, because you're going to end up sanding anyway. And I'll show you what happens with those powder clumps later. But I do try to carefully paint each number with the mica powder with a thin layer. I try to make it kind of thick so that it's easier to see because I figured the silver would be a little bit harder. I'm going to use purple dice on this one. Higher contrast, of course, will work better. Doing the top numbers are a little bit more difficult, like on the D20 and the D12, but I do eventually get it done. And you can see the little clumps of powder. Again, you want to avoid that, probably even just wipe them. Pour in your powder, shake it, get powder everywhere, shake out the excess powder, and then use the brush to smooth out any clumps you may have. Might work best. But you know what's the best? You guys, that's right, viewers, subscribers, and also a special thank you to my patrons. Thank you for your support and helping me to make these videos. If you would also like to help support me and make these videos, you can go to patreon.com forward slash geek happens and sign up for a tier, get access to some 3D models that might be helpful to you, as well as discounts at my store at 3dmtabletop.com on miniatures, dice, dice cases, terrain, boats, wagons, and a bunch of other things. On the cap mold, the easiest by far is the lid to paint the numbers, but even then, there's little clumps of powder, which is to be expected when playing with powder. But I get that put on there, and it looks pretty decent. I'm sure you all will come up with a more efficient way of doing this, but this was my trial run, and that's how I did it. So I do my sprue one next, and I don't know if it's the powder or just because it's more difficult to angle in there, but I get way more clumps on this one. And it could also be that I'm thinking, my resin has been sitting for a while, I need to get this done fast so that I have time to mix my color and pour my resin before I run out of work time with my resin. And you can see I have a lot bigger clumps in this, which is not good. I should have gone through and cleaned that up. But I'm going to use this new mica powder I got. It's a color shift from purple to bronze, I believe. And uh, it looks really cool. So I'm going to use that one for the cap mold. And then if you haven't seen it before, I use the shredded mylar. And I use that as my dragon skin dice because they look like little dragon scales. So I put that in the jumbo to make it look really cool. It makes your mixture really thick and doesn't exactly stir very well or pour very well, but it's worth it. For the jumbos and normal sized dice it works okay. I have not tried it with minis. I might have to cut the mylar up. So I'm going to pour in very slowly and carefully trying not to disturb the powder that I have placed on the numbers into my molds. And I don't know if you have to pour this slowly. I was just being really careful not to make it push the powder out or rub it out of the numbers. I don't know. It may not even make any difference. You could probably just pour it in like you normally do. But I go ahead and pour it really slowly until I fill them all just in case. I 
I just barely didn't mix enough to get it filled all the way, but that's okay. I just borrow some of the clear to top off and make it stick over the top a little way so that there's some excess that will come through my sprue holes so that any of the bubbles can be eliminated in the pressure pot and it'll have somewhere for the resin to go. And just for good measure, I'll top that off again with some more clear later. And then I just clump pour this resin in there. There's not really a good way to carefully pour it in because of the flakes, but I do try as best I can to carefully clump pour that in there. If you want to do different colors of dragon scales, they do come in a variety of colors. You can look for either foil confetti or shredded mylar. But after my resin has cured in the pressure pot, I'll go ahead and remove my sprues from my hybrid sprue cap mold, and then I will see what those look like. Usually twisting makes it come off fairly easy. Sometimes I do just use the cutters to just cut the little top off just enough so that you can get the lid off. And voila, they look pretty good. And I should be able to sand the excess and have just the number. The jumbo looks pretty good also, but there's definitely larger clumps of powder. But overall, the contrast of the colors with the numbers should show up really well. I'm not good enough to make the powder just show up on the numbers like I wanted. So like I say, it would probably be easier to just coat the whole mold in a thin layer. But I'm going to go ahead and sand those. With my style of dice, this isn't very efficient because I would technically have to also sand the flat edges. But if you're using just a sharp edge die, it would be pretty easy and actually maybe even faster than painting numbers if you have to sand all of your faces anyway. I mainly just want to see how well the numbers will come out, so I'm not going to worry about sanding my edges. And actually I think it looks pretty cool with my edges being that accented color anyway. Up close it does look good, but that could also just be the resin that's being pushed into the number as you sand. So after I get done sanding the faces, I will scrub them out with some water and a little manicure brush to make sure that all the excess resin is out of there and it's just the powder that is showing. The first side of course takes more sanding because I gotta get rid of the sprue, but the other sides don't take as long to just get rid of that excess that's on the face of the die. It's also a little bit harder to tell on these dice just because of that really cool purple color shift which does look really good, but the shimmies in it are very close to the silver also anyway so it's a little bit harder to differentiate with the number but up close and with good lighting it looks really cool so it really didn't take all that long to do one side go through all of the grits of the polishing paper i'm showing this part in real time just so you can get a guesstimate of about how long it will take to do a face but all of the rest i will just skip or speed through but you can see that looks really good. Again, it could be excess resin in there that I will clean out. And now that it's all clean, that's what it looks like. And overall, that looks really cool. The color shifting purple looks good and the numbers are decent. I can read them and that's the goal. So let's go ahead and do the other ones and see what they look like before and after sanding. And you can tell where the clumps are, like in the 12 there, because it didn't sand out all the way so definitely try to avoid those. But overall, if you don't want to paint numbers, this should actually work fairly well. Maybe you should try it, or maybe you don't want to, and like me, if, because with my dice, it's easier to just sand the one face and paint. Probably takes just about the same amount of time, but could be faster for you if you used edge dice if you just do this. Here's the before of the jumbo and I'm going to sand it, and it has the bigger clumps of powder in it, which as I sand, you can see it's just gold everywhere. And the powder pockets pop, and there's the little divots where the 
powder was. So again, avoid those whenever you can. But once it's all sanded out, it looks really nice. Other than those little pockets of powder that are still left in some places. But overall, if you can avoid that, it could work well for you. It might not. Depends on what you want to try to do. But that's what I did. I hope this video was at least somewhat helpful for you, or at least gave you ideas. If you like this video, make sure to click the thumbs up, subscribe, so that you can get notified of new videos when they come out. And thanks for watching.